Hey guys, I am in nerd heaven right now because I am at the MIT Media Lab in Massachusetts. Why? Well, obviously as a maker, I love to look into and learn from the history of making things and manufacturing. I'm also fascinated by the future. So to give you a little bit of both, here at MIT, they developed the first computer controlled milling machine in 1952. That's a subtractive manufacturing tool. That means it takes a chunk of metal and subtracts pieces from it in precise ways until you end up with the machine part. They've also invented several of our modern day 3D printers. That's additive manufacturing. It's the opposite. You start from nothing and you print the part that you need until you have it extant. But all of that is starting to slide away because here inside the MIT Media Lab, Neil Gershenfeld's Center for Bits and Atoms is looking at the far future of manufacturing. And it's not additive or subtractive, it's biological. They're developing machines that can make machines that can make machines. This isn't a Star Trek replicator. This is a replicator that can make replicators. And while I know that sounds ludicrously fanciful, it's happening right now. And we're about to take a tour through some of the machines and meet some of the incredible people developing this real future. All right, Neil. Good. I can't so, wait to see your toys. Good. I'm going to walk you through nano, then micro, then meso, then macro. Awesome. And as we do this, we're going to be going through the $10 million research lab that contains the $1 million workshop, that contains the $100,000 fab lab, that contains the $10,000 DIY machines, that contains the $1,000 anyone can have them machines. And they all need each other. They're all nested. And we're going to see them at the same time. All the powers of 10. Yeah. Good. So this first stop is nanobio. This is digital fabrication, just like you know it, yeah. but at molecular scales. So you know G codes that run machines. Yes. Noah does B codes. Yeah, so on uh, Project B codes, uh, we create biological codes uh, that allow E. coli, like the colonies in the yeah. plate, to communicate with computer-controlled liquid handlers, like the one that you see over there, via nanopore sequencers like uh, this handheld one right here. So, <laughs> so he just said a lot in that. The bug yes. has something it wants. So it sends out a code, a molecular code. That code is, that, I want to eat, I want I oxygen, want some things, I want. Yeah. Um, I'm, yeah. So that reads the code. The particular way in which E. coli expresses meaning that. Meaning Noah taught it right. to, to speak not in molecules but in codes. Then these sort of you know, bio labs are full of machines, like right. the ones behind you. Mm -hmm. um, that tells the machine what the bug wants. And then the machine further sends codes back to the E. coli that let you speak E. coli to it. So it's just like G codes with the machine, but between biology, living biology, and inorganic machines. So you, when you say you taught it to speak, are you breeding it in order to communicate so in the right way? what enables us to do that is to treat nucleic acids like a digital material. So it's just a polymer, right? But uh, where each uh, unit in the polymer can represent two bits. These are, so this is what it would be doing anyway. No, You're just entering. these are heavily edited G E. coli. Oh, okay. yeah. He's putting co he, he's recoding parts of how E. coli works. So it speaks B codes. So, so we're engineering the bacteria to release nucleic acids, which it typically would not release. These are hacked E. coli. And then wow. we're collecting those nucleic acids from the growth media uh, and then preparing them uh, for uh, reading on nanopore sequencers that uh, we can decode and then control our uh, liquid handler to, to then provide the nutrients now, that the cells that's are asking for. Since that's, yeah. a, that's a small step. And even this bigger is both exciting and terrifying. <laughs> no, no, I'm going to really scare right. you. Another one of my students, James, worked with JCVI on complete synthesis of a genome from scratch. So that's one where you sit in the computer, right, you right, type, you right. make the genome, and then you boot the bug. And so as part of that, we're doing things like the microfluidic machinery to put genes to boot up cells. Right, right. Yeah. Wow. Okay, that's the first stop. Thank you. Great meeting you. Nice to meet you. Okay, next stop. All right. So in that lab, we learned how to do mole program molecules. Mm -hmm. Next, we need to see what we're doing. So this is Prashant. Good morning. And that's, uh, is that a spider? 
Uh, that's a baby spider, yes. Baby spider. A baby okay. spider. So this is... This it's an SEM? No, well, it's, it's more than an SEM, it's crazy. So this is an SEM for imaging. And so here, zoom in on the hairs on the hairs. Go, go, go way in. Um, so this can see down to nanometers, which is almost atoms. If you want, right, that, right. That, that, that sees individual atoms one at a time. <laughs> But this is one step of it. So th this goes down to, so those are the hairs on the hairs. Wow. So nanometer resolution. But what's so crazy about this tool, the reason we love it so much is, um, normally you can't put things in electron microscopes without a lot of prep. Right, this one lets you dial, dial up the atmosphere. And so you can change the atmospheric pressure so the charge neutralization through the atmosphere ionizes meaning you can put wet living, it's not, I wouldn't go in there, but you can put, right, right, you can right. put anything in there without, so it's an unprepared spider, but wait, there's more. <laughs> it, it can do elemental mapping, so you can see everything that it's made out of, and it can do lithography, so you can do nanometer patterning. So it's a whole nanofab lab in a box. Jeez, I'm um, Do you have any um, uh, elemental maps handy? Uh, I do, I think. Just to see what they look like. Um, and so it's great for nano, you know, for, for making nanostructures, for imaging, um, and the ability to. So you can actually also manipulate materials. Like inside. so, for example, if you take the sword you just made, right. a fun thing to do would be to take a little section of it. You can see the micrometallurgy, but then you make pictures like that where that's the elemental composition. So you can see the the like when you quench the alloy and you yeah, hold it to yeah, make the sword, yeah. you can see the laminates the carbon and, and you can the, see right, the carbon mm -hmm. and all of that. Okay, that's our second stop. <laughs> That was super micro, this is semi-micro. No, 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 this is still, still nano. nano. Okay. Yeah, yeah that, that was atoms, this is now tens of atoms on up. Oh, right. Okay. Let's move on. Okay, so this is Nadia, Nadia Adam. Hi, Nadia. Nice to meet okay. you. So, um, if you look at this, that's a 3D fly-through of the head of a house fly. <laughs> no way. Okay. Uh huh. So that was made on this. This is possibly our favorite tool. So explain this. Yeah, it's a CT scanner. So it's an X-ray with a detector at the back. You take lots of X-ray pictures. You do a right. radon transform. You do 3D reconstruction. So I'm going to show you this. This is a flexible metal. But belt. sorry, a, a lot of the people you'll see um, say amazing things that need a moment to unpack. So it's an X-ray microscope right. that lets you see down to microns. So 3D scanning is annoying. It's hard to 3D scan, you get artifacts, yes, all of that. Yes. If you can spend a million dollars on this machine, you can buy a box that instead of 3D scanning the surface, gives you the whole internal construction down Every to a micron. Last, right. That, down to a micron. So, wow. so Nadia just put in a, in fact, that's a NASA bellows, right? Yeah, this is a NASA bellows. So say you want to have like a connection and it needs to be slightly flexible because it might be slightly eccentric. This is a metal bellows, so mm -hmm. it can be um, sustain really high pressure. It's formed of three layers of metal, and if there are cracks in it, then you know the spaceship explodes. So we and you die. Check. And so right. <laughs> it's very, uh, so then um, you can set. X-ray has um, volts and the current, and so based on how much current you have, you have more or less gamma rays. And based on the volts, your gamma rays are of different intensity, right? So you're not looking at the so, uh, a projection of yeah. the internal construction of the bellows. Of okay. So this yep. is X-rays firing through. So, and but this is real time live. So if you if you if she you know she if she messes about with wow. it, if you come in, um, you can. And now if she if she started it rotating at the end of this walkthrough, you could come back and have the 3D construction of the yeah. bellows, including any micro cracks. So here's something else I scanned for you guys. This is a seed pod. You can see I can in this histogram remove things of different density. Uh, so you oh, can see this wow. is so that's what's inside a seed It's like pod. a spiky cucumber. Uh, you can see that there is an internal structure that as it dries, it'll curl out. And if I remove things of lower density, you can see the configuration of just the seeds as they're about to be like wow. out. See also, this is how these structures are how it um, attaches itself up. Yeah. Nadia's made a lot of traffic between grocery stores. <laughs> and walks in the woods in here. <laughs>